You know, I didn't even know Calvin Klein was still a thing. I find myself in a situation, however, where I'm suddenly far less inclined to recline in a pair of Calvin Kleins. And you want to know why that is? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'd just love to tell you all about it. For Mother's Day this year, Calvin Klein launched a campaign that included as its cover models Roberto Bette, a pregnant trans man, and Erica Fija, a trans woman. In other words, because explication is the coin of this particular bizarro realm in which we found ourselves trapped, what we have here is a man and a woman who have basically swapped identities in order to carry out a straight heterosexual lifestyle that still somehow manages to have that tang on the tongue of subversiveness. Now, if you happen to take a look at, uh, say, previous Calvin Klein marketing campaigns, you can see them right there on your screen, you're apt to notice a through line that's pretty bold, pretty beautiful, and leaning pretty heavily on the idea that those features which make us attractive to the opposite sex should be magnified and enhanced through the wonderful practice of photography. In short, they're cover designs are meant to give you a boner or a lady boner if that's your thing so then along comes calvin klein for mother's day 2022 and gives you sasha baron cohen from the dictator and michael jackson if he had a better surgeon so we got to call this you know, the gender blender now i'm open-minded when it comes to humor and if you wanted to tell me that this was Calvin Klein's way of humorously deconstructing the sex sales model upon which they've built their entire empire over the decades, I'd have to raise a glass and say, well, that certainly roasts the shit out of it. But to come at us with this in complete seriousness, pretending that this is in any way indicative of the normal way in which the species operates or should operate is frankly a little off-putting and definitely not something I want to look at for very long. Now, I know that the boys of today are far more sophisticated in terms of the pornography to which they have ready access. I know that they don't know the struggle that the boys of my generation faced back in the Great Depression era of enticing photographic entertainment, the callow and deprived years of my youth. A Calvin Klein pictorial of old would have represented something exciting, something to say, think about at the end of the day. Had I run across this present weird concept at that age, I either would have been discussed it on site or possibly really discuss it with my dumb ass put two and two together the next day anyway i mean come on i still would have wanked to it but my point is the whole world's gone crazy do we really need this at this inclusive embracing point in our recent history what in the world makes calvin klein feel the need to be the standard bearer for a lifestyle scream largely into existence by the very vocal minority it's the same mentality that leads to creating pregnant person emojis that weirdly resemble a modern day bill gates so I don't know what the hell you people are doing. The answer, of course, is a lot of things. You're doing a lot of things. But at its core, as always, the left is sowing confusion. Not between me and you. We're already too far gone down the common sense path to fall for crap like this. No, they're paving the way for our kids to look at this sort of thing and consider it normal. Remember what I said. You got to pander it. You got to legalize it. You got to launder it. You got to laugh at it. And after all, if you never knew anything else, you'd think it was normal, too. And let me close on this thought. There ain't nothing right about seeing a pregnant belly with a treasure trail, okay? <laughs> you shouldn't have a happy trail on a pregnant belly. That's a fact. Uh, John, do you have any desire to get pregnant? Uh, no, not particularly. <laughs> and even if I did, I couldn't because I'm a man. Um, <laughs> That's hate speech, John. Yeah, good. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. If it's hate speech, why did I enjoy saying it so much? I yeah, don't know. exactly. And it's funny because even that is such like a, a basic thing. But yeah, we're now even on the back foot of like, you know, men can't get pregnant. And this is something that's actually being debated. So I'm at the point where, you know, I want to fight fire with fire. I would like to regulate things like this. I think that if you want to promote advertisements that are perverting reality yeah. that children will see you should pay a tax or something like it's one thing you know if you want to advertise a woman in a bikini and be like calvin klein if you buy our underwear you're going to look like her but to be making this statement and be warping what is natural and what we all know is true uh, i think that that is beyond you know enticing advertisements meant to draw attention and that's just like literally at war with nature and i think that you should have to pay a tax for that because you know we know it's stupid but our kids are going to see that and they're going to see the emojis and they're going to and over time their perception whether it's because they directly buy into it or they're pressured to because the herd consensus is buying into it like that's going to affect future generations and so we have to be the people now to say we've had enough we're going to stop it and uh, i think a great start to that would be like preventing this type of stuff from occupying the media from occupying advertising and a great way to do that is to tax it because i think corporations respond to monetary incentives let's give them one nature tax 
Yeah, literally.